Welcome back to Object Oriented Design, part number three. It is assumed at this point you have watched parts one and two. I'm Professor Chris Ferguson. Polymorphism. Poly means many, morph means to change. An advanced object oriented programming concept. Put simply, poly means many, morph means to change. Put them together, polymorphism implies many changes. It is the ability for an object reference or pointer or variable to change, to morph to another type. A variable is required to access an object. I want to make it very clear, it is the variable that morphs. Let's say I have a variable named enemy object. It is declared as type enemy, the parent class. I can assign that I can assign to that variable a new zombie object. On the next line, I create a second different object of type drone and assign it to the same variable enemy object. That is the morph. The variable enemy object, which was accessing a zombie, now has changed into a variable accessing a drone object, a drone object. Poly means many. Let's have enemy object the variable morph again so that it now accesses a mutant object. To be clear, we are looking at three separate objects, but only one variable enemy object, and it is the variable that is morphing. Physical objects do not change. I cannot have the same object be three different things, but I can have one variable enemy object morph between three different objects, zombie, drone, and mutant. Polymorphism needs inheritance. The only way you can have one variable that changes between types is that if it is of the parent class type. As you can see from the diagram, zombie inherits enemies, variables, and methods. Zombie is the child, Enemy is the parent. Drone inherits enemies, variables, and methods. Mutant inherits enemies, variables, and methods. There is an old saying. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Well, I'm making up a new saying. If it has all of enemies' variables, and it has all of enemies' methods, then it's an enemy object. All three classes, zombie, drone, mutant, have enemy variable and methods. That is why they can be assigned to a variable of type enemy. Just like I'm doing with drone here. In fact, you want to avoid assigning a drone object to a variable of type drone. If I program a level of the game with five enemy characters, I do not want to have to worry about how many zombies I have, how many drones I have, how many. I do not want to worry about how many of each one I have. I will just have five generic enemy object variables, and they can be any combination of the type. So, assign new child class objects to type parent class. Monomorphs. A caterpillar changes into a butterfly. A tadpole morphs into a frog. Since they can only do this once, they are monomorphs. A polymorph can change many times, or change back and forth. If there was ever a caterpillar that cocooned and changed into a butterfly, that later shed its wings and grew back into a caterpillar, that later cocooned again back to a butterfly, that would be a polymorph. Perhaps a better animal analogy, say that five times fast, <clears throat> would be a chameleon. It can change from a green lizard to a brown lizard, back to a green lizard, and so on. Is a chameleon a lizard? And we also understand that it's just the pigment or the color of the chameleon that changes, not the entire lizard. You must understand that it is just the object variable that changes, not the physical object. 
On level one, the variable points to a zombie. So we're battling a zombie. On level two of the game, the enemy object variable points to a drone. So we're fighting a drone. On level three, the same variable enemy object is pointing to a mutant. The same variable, the same code, but we get different creatures every level of the game. Programming polymorphism requires understanding object references or pointers or object variables. Consider the following pseudocode variable declarations. I'm going to create a zombie object which is of type zombie. I'm going to create a mutant object which is of type mutant. I'm going to create a drone object which is of type drone. Finally, I'm going to create an enemy object which is of the parent class, enemy. Polymorphism allows this one variable, enemy object, to reference or point to many different types of objects. That's the morphing. I don't have to create a different variable for every object. I can use the same variable over and over again. That's morphing. If my game has 20 different enemy characters, I do not want to have to declare 20 different variables and juggle between them. Polymorphism allows me to create one variable of type enemy. On level 1 of the game, again, it is assigned a zombie object. Since it has all the child class zombies variables and method, that object will behave like a zombie and spring back up. No matter how many times you drop it, kill it, smash it. On level 2 of the game, where I say enemy object equals new mutant, I assign a mutant object to the variable. Now the game variable behaves like a mutant. Level 3 assigns a drone object to the same variable. And all of a sudden, that same variable controls an object that flies through the air firing missiles at me. Level 4 of the game brings enemy object back to a zombie. And the undead, once again, is my nemesis. Keep in mind, it is the same code, the same variables on each level. But the player is seeing a completely different adversary. Hmm. Polymorphism requires inheritance. Zombie inherits enemy, so it has all of enemy's variables and methods. Mutant inherits enemies, so it has all of enemy variables and methods. Drone inherits enemy, so it has all the enemy variables and methods. This allows the variable enemy object, which is of type enemy, to morph. I can say enemy object equals new zombie, and that object will behave like a zombie. I could say enemy object equals new mutant, and that object will behave like a mutant. I could say the same variable enemy object equals new drone, and all of a sudden it's behaving like a drone. If it has all the enemy's variables and all the enemy's methods, it's a duck. No, excuse me, it's an enemy. Right? And it will, the things that it has in common will happen the same between zombie and mutant and drone. And the things that are different, like drones fly, will happen differently for that enemy object variable. But also keep in mind each object, zombie, mutant, drone, has its own variables and methods. So when enemy objects points to a zombie and fire weapons is called, it tries to eat your brain. When an enemy object points to a mutant, fire weapon may swing an axe. When an enemy object points to a drone, fire weapon launches a missile. Every object is sort of two parts. It has what it inherited from the parent and what it adds to the mix. And that's what allows enemy object to behave differently. 